good. Hello. Hi. How are you all doing? Doing well. Good to see um, you in a minute. Thank you. I just came here to know why you support Biden Harris. I mean, oh, yeah, freedom of speech. Um, but is there a specific policy that they're doing that you like? I mean, specifically. Yeah. Um, you know, right now it's just about um, standing for what you believe in, and you know we're a business, and dude, but I like you, man. I appreciate I it. I see you too, by the way. I have been very busy. I've been out good. very That's well. Good. Um, but is there a specific policy in mind? Because if, if there there has to be. Is there some issue you have in like? Can you uh, repeat the past slide or? Hey, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, if there's a specific like policy you have in mind, if there's a specific um, you know idea or or issue you have concerns about. Have you heard of the TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership? Okay. Okay, that's a trade deal, okay? okay. And it got bipartisan disagreement. So Biden is gonna, um, is gonna bring back the TPP. Um, if you haven't heard of it, I suggest you look into it. Bernie Sanders was opposed to it. Um, the current president was opposed to it. So um, I'm just giving you a policy example and if you don't know about it, I suggest you research it because that those trade deals, you know, if you've heard of NAFTA, you know, we have all this stuff we make make in China. I think all of that makes a big point. Right. So. I mean, you know, I'm not a politician, but right now in my life, the only thing I care about is character. Mm -hmm. And you know, if I'm if I'm if I'm looking at two people, you know, ultimately we all come down to like two choices. It's it's either Trump or Biden, and for me, um, character matters a lot. Okay. I, I'm not saying like Biden's like the perfect president. I'm not saying that, but you know, with everything that we've gone through in the last four years, especially this year, um, it's really important that younger people understand that character matters. You know what I mean? And um, with this whole thing, I'm not gonna say I know everything. Like, let me be the first to say. You know, Biden is, he was against the LGBTQ community for like decades, right? And I'm not saying, you know, he's perfect, but at the end of the day, it's like, we all came down to two choices. Uh -huh. And I choose to, um, yeah, I, I just choose to be with the person who I feel better about, right? Mm -hmm. um, Trump has been here for the last four years. It's like, it's like hiring an employee that, you already have a history with versus hey this guy has a this guy's new new resume let's try this out mm -hmm. and so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna act like i know every policy you know what i mean but for me it just comes down to character character okay and um may i jump in yes i think the most important thing is, is can we pay our bills can we make ends meet agreed okay that's the most important thing agreed and uh I mean, as far as I know, you know, uh, the problem is not that many people are voting this. I think that, uh, you know, banking, financial policy is important. I think trade policy is important. I think immigration policy is important. Uh, a lot of these issues are definitely important. Um, but unfortunately, it doesn't seem like the average voter is even really aware of those things who, who is voting out there. So, and I think that's why uh, things just don't add up very well. I can, I can actually see what you're saying. Um, you know, I'm personally not a Republican, but I can definitely understand as a business owner, 
Well, here's the thing. Ten years ago or so, we had the Occupy Wall Street movement, mm -hmm. and uh, there was no mention of Wall Street or Federal Reserve in the debates. Right. And I think that was pretty harsh, and we have an overvalued housing market. I don't know if you've been here uh, 10, 15 years ago, but this place kind of felt like a war zone and foreclosures. Right. And, um, you know, I don't know what the eight years of Obama has done to actually remedy the problem. I mean, we haven't seen anybody go to jail in the banking sector. We haven't seen uh, really any real financial reform, no banks broken up or anything major serious, um, you know, unlike the after the Great Depression under FDR. So uh, I think that uh, the problem is people vote on feelings, not based on facts, kind of like this euphemism that gated areas make you feel safe, which they don't. There, there's no evidence to prove that gated areas reduce crime. And because of that, these builders market on it and people pay for things that they don't need. And that's why people are struggling for one reason, because it's feelings-based. Right. And I think that feelings is not as important as the truth. Right, I think, you know, at the end of it, it's like, um, no, it's just really a personal preference. Like even for me, I can tell you this much. Under Obama, I'm a dreamer. So before Obama, I I, I owned this company, and before him, I was actually an illegal immigrant. I was undocumented. I couldn't even go to college whatsoever. And under his policies, I was able to, you know, be an you know like a, a legal person. And I'm not saying every single president is like one size fits all, but at the, at the end of it, it's like, you know, it, it's just, it comes down to character right now in this, in this season. Right. Well, I wish you best of luck. I have friends who are under that status, but I've seen a lot of these people under that status are using their excuse to pump votes and to maintain agendas and increase the chances of certain candidates winning and changing laws. There's a lot of special interest behind our immigration policy, and I don't like that. I see the culinary union using identity games and busing people to vote, and we've got Harry Reid and Steve Sisolak as a result of that. Right. And we see how Sisolak puts the former CEO of Jim Murin as part of the COVID task force. That explains everything. So if multinational corporations and special interests are behind our immigration policy, I think there is something seriously wrong with that. And I don't want it. And I think if we're having people coming in from other countries to fulfill an agenda like that, then by all means, I have the right to be concerned. Right. And I, I, I get called as a racist for doing that, you know? And, and it's just, honestly, it's like, you know, if, if, if they're, if people are driving a car to drag race, you don't blame the car, you blame the person who did the racing. So I'm not blaming you, I'm blaming the people in charge who gave us a pretty lousy deal. I mean, that's just, that's just what I think it all comes down. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, I understand. I totally understand what you're saying, and it's not, you know, it's not like, yeah, I, I totally get it. Like, there's a part of me, it's like, it's not, this is not like 100%, but at, at the end of the day, like, we're all kind of just given two choices, you know what I mean? Um, and I think that, like, we feel strongly about this, and I think that's actually pretty amazing, and, and I would really encourage you to, you know, get, like, get involved, like, locally, and implement these changes, because it seems like you, you know, you, you come from a good place. Well, you know, and I the, respect the, the, the thing is, is that uh, a lot of people have told me that, uh, and I have to go right now, but it's good to know about these issues, Yeah. Uh, but I have a lot of other things I'm worried about. Um, I've told you this before, my main concern is how these cities are built, and my concern is I don't even know how to do an outreach campaign to wake people up. I think the setup of our housing, our streets, our shopping, everything is a disgrace. We now are so um, car dependent, and the worst part is, look at these homes, they're close together. I mean, I can go to an inner city, old fashioned area, and you have homes that are close together, and they walk, they take transit, they don't need a car. This system is a sham, okay? 
and it's responsible for environmental problems or social problems, a lot of problems we have. And the problem is, is that, you know, what are we going to change the code? What are we going to change the mindset of the average person? That people need to buy something that's better. See, but for me to get involved in building, it's not like this company where I can just open a little shop. I need hundreds of thousands of dollars. And that's why I'm delivering on my side job so I can put every dime I can in the stock market so then I can start my company. See, that's the problem. And that solves problems, not elections and politics, because it's so dirty and just, I don't know. All right, so what is your solution? Well, what is the solution? Well, the solution and I'm glad you're asking. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. My solution specifically is uh, we have to, first of all, make sure that there are codes in the way we have to get rid of them or change them. So I believe under this code, this building cannot face Grand Canyon Drive, like downtown. There has to be a setback and you require minimum parking spaces. I think that's absurd. As a business owner, if they want to put parking, it's up to them. I think you should be permitted to put housing above this building or something else. And I think this building should look like a house, so then it can be close to these other homes. This is how the old-fashioned cities used to be. I think we need more of a grid street layout, uh, like we see in downtown. I don't understand what is the point of having a street that's a dead end, and you have to loop around in the housing complex to get out. What the hell is up with this? Why do we do this? What's the point of this? It doesn't make any sense. And then we separate so much, we have like, uh, different types of housing, different types of commercial, large scale, all separated, and you go to downtown and it's not like that. So what is the meaning behind this? So I think that we need to change up the way we set up, and uh, you know, I'm just going to start off by building 30 structures on the outskirts of town. And, you know, I think I think if you're seeing something that could be done better, you can do it. I think that I think that you can really, really like do something about it. I see, but the question is, are the people who say they want to solve climate change, are they willing to do that solution? Because our main source of emissions is from the way we get around. Right. You see, right. we don't have a lot of factories here. Right. No, I, I agree with you. Uh, I think that there are just some things that's like, it's beyond me. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not like, I'm not like politically or like I'm not invested in that way where I am trying to change mm -hmm. like an entire city. Um, and that's just where I come from. Um, and for other people, you know, people like you, you do have that in you, you know what I mean? And, and that's that's why we celebrate the, our differences. Mm -hmm. People, some people are fueled to actually make change, right? Mm -hmm. And that you, you see, um, you see these things that could be done better. Uh, things that a regular person like me might not see. <laughs> right? And I think that if you... No, uh, yeah, because 15 years ago I used to think this was good. This was how it should be done. Right. And uh, there's a lot of us realize that this doesn't make any sense, you know? Yeah, I mean, if you see it, I think that clearly you're seeing something I'm not seeing, right? Uh -huh. And I'm like a regular person, I don't see that. And so I think that if you get involved and do your part so that other people can also see it, yeah. make those changes, Right. That's going to take years, unless if I get support, for me to raise enough investments to buy the land, purchase the materials, build the thing, go through the permitting. That takes a lot of time. That could take later in the decade or so. And, and then that's just, and then who do I market it to? It's very, but anyway, I have to get going. What's your name? Bea. Bea. I think I remember you. 